For this, the map of the New England states is given below, where we want to draw a graph that models which New England states share a common border, where vertices will represent the states and edges will represent shared borders. So what we're going to do here is think in the same way that Euler did back in the 18th century. We're going to think about taking that map of New England and reducing it down to points representing each of the states. So we'll have vertices for each of Maine, Vermont, New Hampshire, Massachusetts, Rhode Island, and Connecticut. And then if states share a border, we just draw a line between them to show that they share a border. And we're going to end up with that weird little shape that looks like a hourglass on a string, like so, by taking our relationship and simplifying it down just to the connections that we are in particular looking at, where this type of construction, this type of idea, hints at a surprisingly deep, surprisingly involved result called the four color theorem, which says that if you make a model like this, if you make a graph like this, no more than four colors will be required for the vertices, or equivalently, no more than four colors are required to color the regions of any map so that no two regions sharing the border have the same color. And in terms of a map itself, you don't really care about that. It would look kind of funky if you tried to make sure that happened. You get tons of weird colors all over the place, so it's not the sort of thing that like a cartographer cares about. But this result here is considered to be the first major result proved by a computer. It actually does hint at some other really important deep things outside of graph theory, but some people still argue that it wasn't quite proven because due to the number of cases, it would need to check that method by hand, and they're, they're still a little bit uh, unsure of it. However, this is one thing that we can use graph theory for is being able to make a picture like this to represent the regions of a map. So the next thing we're gonna think of is how we can use graph theory in a logistical method that's a bit less, I don't know, free. Something that has a bit more of a uh, meaning and use to it, I guess I would say.